bless America. Gotta let you know what's up. God bless America. Are you sleep or are you up? God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be no dummy or a fool. God bless America. I gotta let them know what's up. God bless America. Are you sleep or are you up? God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be a dummy or a fool. Bear to me. This is the land of opportunity. USA, this my community. I stay updated with the foolery. What up, y'all? It's Papa Z, and I'm back with another video. Today's video, man, is going to be about Trump and Biden. Um, I found some old video footage of both of them. And Biden, you know, back in the day, man, he was so he was so uh, tough on immigration. And this person that we got now, man, I don't know, is like a total flip. Um, you just check out the hypocrisy in, you know, what he's doing now. Then we got Trump. Trump, he was, uh, this is before he was, a, you know, before he became a presidential candidate or even won the presidency. He was a businessman back in the day. So um, he has certain views that he still stand on to this day. And I don't think he changed. So with that said, man, hit that like button, man. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share button. And uh, yeah, man, check this out. We're going to start off with Biden first. Check it out. That no great nation can be in a position where they can't control their borders. It matters how you control your borders. Not just for immigration. But it matters for drugs, terror, a whole range of other things. So that's the first sort of truism. The second truism is that, that this nation is such that people in the country should have the first opportunity to be able to have jobs that pay well and have jobs that are decent, and that after that, the second crack goes to what we may need from other parts of the world or other or, or any other input. Wow. Now. Now, y'all probably like, who was that? That was Joe Biden saying all the truism stuff. You know, he he know that Americans come first. You know, what I'm saying he know that he just said it. You know what I'm saying? And then he flip-flopping and putting the migrants first. But that ain't it, though. Watch this clip. Okay. And so I think they're split. I well, don't know. Let me talk to something unsavory now. The issue of immigration. Yeah. Is there a Democratic Party position which accommodates the need to stop illegal entry, punish people who hire people with cheap wages illegally, and also gives hope to people who live here illegally and people who want to come here right now? Is there a possible combination that hits all those points? I think there is. And I think that the, that the McCain-Kennedy bill, Kennedy-McCain, the Specter bill that came right. out does it. If you take a look, Chris, at what Frist is talking about, only enforcement. The enforcement provisions that sit inside the Specter bill, the McCain or the Kennedy McCain bill, there ain't a dime's worth of difference to them. They're the same amount of money, 12,000 new border agents. Do you think they work? I think they will work better if they actually, in fact, do it. Can you scare okay. an employer in this country, whether he's an agricultural worker or a housewife, into not hiring an illegal because the punishment's so high that if you get caught, yes. it's a huge embarrassment to your family, and you may just hit a, get hit with a fine that'll kill you. Yeah, absolutely, you, you can. can do and that's what we should do. Well, I think we should do that. Because other, you can't catch you everybody. Can't. No, 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 you, you, you can't. And the last part of this is that the Democratic position also recognizes you got 11 million alien, uh, illegal aliens here. They have to have a way to earn their way into the deal. This is an amnesty. They're required to take 11 years' worth. They pay a fine. They got to learn to speak English. They got to pass um, I like testers. The English part. Yeah, I like the English well, part. By the I way, think we, if we want the problems of Canada right now, to keep encouraging people to keep their foreign language. English is going to unite this country potentially. It always it has right. in the past. I can't think of a country that has two languages as their accepted languages that is doing all that well, including Switzerland and or right. uh, Canada. It, it, it divides us. Yeah. You can't talk to each other. Anyway, thank you, Senator Joe Biden. Thank We've you. solved it. You've done it. Yeah, that was that's Joe Biden. He's being tough on immigration. Back then he was. He was trying to be tough. Uh, they had the, the bill. It was called a Specter bill. And it was uh, it was like for border security, but it didn't pass. And Joe Biden was all for it. He wanted it to pass. You heard it himself. A country can't be ran with two, two languages. 
you know? And guess what's happening now? This is where the hypocrisy come from, from Joe Biden. He got the borders wide open. And then he even said, you know, take you back to that little clip that you just seen. He used the word illegal, illegal, uh, illegal alien. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not illegal migrant, but he said illegal alien. You know, but like I said, here comes the hypocrisy and here is when he started to change. Watch this. You use the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing. But you, you regret using that word. Yes. This is so much hypocrisy, man. An unrelenting stream of immigration. Non-stop. Non-stop. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. I'll tell you the numbers are absolutely skyrocketing down here at our southern border. CBP sources telling me the last three days in a row, Border Patrol has apprehended more than 7,000 illegal immigrants per day. I would in fact make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. And to keep in mind, these buses are not from Texas. They're not Greg Abbott's buses. These are the Biden administration's buses. This is Border Patrol mass releasing people. You can see handfuls of them are standing around not knowing where they are, what to do, where to go next. The man even got mad at Texas and wanted Texas to remove the razor wire from blocking illegal immigrants or illegal migrants or criminals from coming in here. He threatened them. The Supreme Court's ruling didn't say we had to take this down. It just said they could cut it. So they can cut it all they want. We're gonna replace it. This is working. And in this park, there were thousands and thousands of people crossing every day. Thousands. I just checked. No one's crossed today. We got it covered. Mr. President, Mr. President, you say you want to secure the border. Texas has secured it. Leave it alone. In Eagle Pass, Texas, where just moments ago, Customs and Border Protection cut a hole through the concertina wire that has been stretched by Texas DPS along the border there to allow migrants to come through. It was initially a group of about 60 to 70 people. It swelled to some 300 very, very quickly. Uh, some women and children who were sort of in the middle of the river were picked up um, by, I guess it would be Texas DPS because they're running the airboats there up and down the river and uh, taken out of the water and, and to safer ground there. But as you can see, as we have watched for the last couple of weeks, the illegal migration across the river into the United States continues uh, with this uh, border crossing in Eagle Pass, seeing thousands of people. And then over the weekend, we set what we believe is a new record of 11,000 people crossing into the United States in a single day. We'll keep an eye on this for you. Well, a little too late, man. The illegal migrants in here and they praising Joe Biden. Look at this. I love you, Joe Biden. Thank you for everything, Joe Biden. I'm good. Now we're about to talk about Trump. This clip right here is when he was on the Oprah Winfrey show before he was president. And, you know, Oprah asked him if he would run if, if he would if he would run for president. But he was like, I don't know. He might. But he's tired of seeing the country being robbed you know what i'm saying but anyway man y'all look at this clip all right you took out a full page ad in uh, major u.s newspapers uh last year criticizing u.s foreign policy what would you do differently donald i'd make our allies forgetting about the enemies the enemies you can't talk to so easily i'd make our allies pay their fair share we're a debtor nation something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country because you can't keep going on losing 200 billion and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Oprah. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here. They sell their cars, their VCRs. They knock the hell out of our companies. And, hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beating the hell out of you, but they are beating the hell out of this country. Kuwait, they live like kings. The poorest person in Kuwait, they live like kings. 
and yet they're not paying. We make it possible for them to sell their oil. Why aren't they paying us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. This, this sounds like political presidential talk to me, and I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not, but I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. Why would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I just probably wouldn't do it, Oprah. I probably wouldn't, but I do get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're, how we're really making other people live like kings, and we're not. You've said, though, that if you did run for president, you believe you'd win. Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my <laughs> life. And, and if I did decide to do it, I think I'd be inclined. I, w I would say that I would have a hell of a chance of winning because I think people, I don't know how your audience feels, but I think people are tired of seeing the United States ripped off. And I can't promise you everything, but I can tell you one thing. This country would make one hell of a lot of money from those people that for 25 years have taken advantage. It wouldn't be the way it's been. Believe me. As y'all could tell, Trump ain't changed. He came in with the same agenda and he was doing it you know the country was it was it was cool when he, when he was when he was president i ain't even gonna lie the man doubling down and making these countries that we're protecting or these countries that are coming over here selling their goods making them pay he's doing it I'm going to let you guys continue just to watch it, man. Watch the, watch the progress. You know, I'll be back. I have been very, very direct with Secretary Stoltenberg and members of the alliance in saying that NATO members must finally contribute their fair share and meet their financial obligations. But 23 of the 28 member nations are still not paying what they should be paying and what they are supposed to be paying for their defense. This is not fair to the people and taxpayers of the United States. And many of these nations owe massive amounts of money from past years and not paying in those past years. Over the last eight years, the United States spent more on defense than all other NATO countries combined. If all NATO members had spent just 2% of their GDP on defense last year, we would have had another $119 billion for our collective defense and for the financing of additional NATO reserves. I will revoke China's most favored nation status. I will implement a four-year plan to phase out all Chinese imports of essential goods and gain total independence from China. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars. And you know what? We got to, we'll do things with Ukraine. We should loan them the money, not send them the money. We should loan them the money so that if they do make it, if they make it, they're against tremendous odds. But if they make it, they pay us back. Loan them the money. Give it to them as a loan. Let them be a little bit like they have to be a little nice. Loan them the money. Don't just hand them a check for 60 billion. I tell you, Zelensky is one of the greatest salesmen in history. Every time he comes to the country, he walks away with 50 or 60 billion dollars. China is buying up our country, while corrupt Democrats and rhino-type politicians in Washington have been spending trillions of dollars on the Green New Deal nonsense, foolish foreign wars, and providing lavish benefits to illegal aliens from all over the planet. China has been spending trillions of dollars to take over the crown jewels of the United States economy, and they are doing that. China is buying up our technology. They're buying up food supplies. They're buying up our farmland. They're buying up our minerals and natural resources. They're buying up our ports and shipping terminals. And with the help of a corrupt influence peddlers, 
like the Biden crime family, China is even trying to buy up the pillars of the U.S. energy industry because, frankly, Biden and the group don't care about real energy. They only care about nonsense energy, energy that doesn't work, and it never will. While some are focused on China's purchases near power plants and military bases, the fact is we should be very concerned about all Chinese communist activity in the United States. As I have long said, economic security is national security. China does not allow American companies to take over their critical infrastructure, and America should not allow China to take over our critical infrastructure. I didn't allow it when I was president, and I won't allow it when we become president again. To protect our country, we need to enact aggressive new restrictions on Chinese ownership of any vital infrastructure in the United States, including energy, technology, telecommunications, farmland, natural resources, medical supplies, and other strategic national assets. We should stop all future Chinese purchases in these essential industries, and we should begin the process of forcing the Chinese to sell any current holdings that put our national security at risk. If we don't do this, the United States will be owned by China, which would make them very happy. When I'm president, I will ensure that America's future remains firmly in American hands, just as I did when I was president before. It'll happen again, and our country will be stronger than ever. Thank you. Now, as y'all can tell by the video, man, you got two people running for president. One is a hypocrite. And the other one stuck to what he said he was going to do. Now, do you want the country divided? Because Biden said it in the beginning. You can't have two languages in here. And if you are, and if you do become a citizen, you have to learn English. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You got to you got to. Be here and pass certain tests. Can't just come over here asking for anything. You know what I'm saying? Biden know that. Or do you want a country where there's jobs, opportunities? You know what I'm saying? Opportunities for us. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I want the second option. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to hold y'all, man. I just came over here, man. I found those clips. Just had to let y'all see, man. And y'all leave down in the comments, man, how y'all feel about the situation, man. Do that for your boy. All right? So, like I always say, man, protect yourself at all times. Keep your head on the swivel. God bless you. God bless me. And God bless America. And I'm out. Papa Z. Peace. God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be no dummy, you're a fool. God bless America. I gotta let them know what's up. God bless America. Are you sleep or are you up? God bless America. Trying to hit you with the news. God bless America. Don't be a dummy, you're a fool. They watching me like a film. Get the snoops. The Papa Z films. They watching me like a film. Get the snoops. The Papa Z films.